All right, Greenwood Stocks uh, here with a, another market recap and update slash scan slash give you stocks to make money. Uh, we are here with Intrinsic Trader and just wanted to look at some OTC, look at some NASDAQ stocks, small caps, and see what can be running for tomorrow. We had a lot of big movers today. So as usual, we want to bring you the biggest percentage movers and also look towards uh, the coming days and the coming week to see what can continue to have some follow through. So uh, first off, we want to uh, get into some OTCs. And so, yeah, what do we have in the OTC world? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Yeah, at, at this point with the OTCs, um, today was a relatively slow day, and I got stopped out of one of my plays, but I'm still super bullish on the airline plays. Um, I'm currently holding um, TAWNF, and um, the thing I like about I like about it is, is volumes coming in. I mean, it was a former big runner, and I feel like at this point it's establishing some support right around um, – 14. So, like I said, I'm, I'm probably going to end up adding to it tomorrow. But I, but I, I, it's more of an intermediate swing. But I am definitely feel like with the volume coming in and, and just with it being a former runner before and then just even from a fundamental um, standpoint, you know, with it being peak travel season, I feel like uh, they will have a second leg up. So, uh, TAWNF is probably my number one swing that I'm holding right now. And uh, something else that I've been – this, that I've been watching too. And I actually got stopped out of this play, but I'm looking to buy back in. I, I, I made a pretty uh, decent trade on it uh, last Friday. I got about 50% out of it. One day hold is um, NOKPF. And um, so basically I'm looking for it. I mean, my pretty much my entry will be around uh, 998 is where I'm looking to buy. So if once it gets to that point, I mean, that's, that's my trigger. I'm going to go in, tight stop and you know, pretty much see what happens. So, and that's another airline as well. So, and the thing I like about this play, uh, NT, uh, AWNF, is that they both have a large amount of institutions holding them, which for me means that there, there's going to be a certain amount of people that are holding it long term. So, it's only going to really go so low. And so, you know, once, once you catch them on the bottom and it's on support, it's a super, super, um, low risk, um, high reward play. And, uh, another play that I'm, uh, that I'm currently watching, I just found this on the scan. I'm not, uh, in this play yet, but it's definitely on the radar is, um, S P O N F. And, uh, the thing I like about, uh, this play in particular is obviously volumes coming in. It's coming off the bottom. It's finding support and the stochastics or, um, are trending up, so I'm, I'm watching this closely, and I'm just waiting for for my perfect opportunity uh, to get in and um, pretty much see what happens. But like at these levels, I mean, it's, it's super low risk, high reward because you, you really don't have to risk a lot. Because if it breaks anywhere below it, too much below the support, then you know, you know, set your stop, have a tight stop, and get stopped out, and just you know, if if buying continues to come in and starts heading back up, you know, just re-enter. So. That's what I'm looking at as far as the OTC. So what you got on, on the on the NASDAQ side? Yeah, uh, if you could, well, uh, I, I'll have you go over because uh, we I, I can see your screen. Uh, oh. <laughs> you, may have, you may have forgot to share it. So, but, uh, oh, damn. I, I, well, okay. Yeah, I, I can go over. Uh, I, 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 I can pull those charts up. But uh, if you want to switch back real quick and then I can uh, I can go over uh, the small caps and share my screen. Yeah. Anyway, while while we're while we're switching uh, presentation modes, yeah, we were looking at first off uh, XELA. It's a um, bio stock. I'm sorry, RNAZ, and it's it's a bio biotech stock uh, IPO. They got a lot of good clinical trials for um, you know different. Uh, it's breast cancer uh, treatment, I believe, and so. Uh, 6.2 million shares, I believe. So really small float. It's moving. It actually made an all uh, an all time high after market. So we'll be looking at that. And besides that play, we had MDIA, 
which was a big gainer. So again, we want big fat green bars. So, I mean, if, if you look at this play, it's following the same pattern, the same principle. That's why you have to be, stay tuned to the market. So we talk about level holding. Uh, briefly, I'll talk about this. You know, this is definitely in a lot of our, our material, our courses, our book, but level holding when, when it's exactly what you, what it sounds like, uh, when a stock is holding level. So, um, meaning support and resistance. So you see a dip, you know, down towards this trend line, never dips past the 20, uh, moving average. So from, from the time it broke up, uh, after this afternoon, so from six to 10, you know, dip to eight, back up to 14, dip to 11, back up to 18. And if you're not selling and taking profits in, I don't know what you're doing. So uh, had a nice run, had a lot of people that were on this stock. SGOC once again, SGOC. Uh, don't want to focus too much on the catalyst, especially if we're not talking about a big biotech stock with a huge groundbreaking, uh, you know, world changing treatment or drug. Uh, you know, these technology stocks are basically just going to be running based on cyclical um, sector rotations. So um, we can look at we can look at it anyway. We're looking at, at uh, what caused this uh, um, technology stocks. And once again, it's just technology stock three hundred. Uh, percent, four hundred percent on Friday, um, and then we're looking at just halts, no news. Just so, I mean, again, we want to pay attention to volume. Look, look at the volume. Look at look at how it goes from no volume to a whole lot of volume, back down almost no volume to a whole lot of volume, and it's making new highs. So, um, again, I, the catalyst and the reason. It can be important, but for right, for right now, we want to we want to focus on the price. We want to focus on the volume. So, uh, another stock for today: WRX. Job stocks are coming up. The country's opening. Um, you know, what else could could staffing and 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 job stocks do but go up? I mean, unemployment's about to run out. People are about to be headed back to work. Vac vaccines are you know uh, some states are getting. Um, they're hitting their 70%, 80% vaccine rate. So everybody's feeling great. Like, you know, nothing ever happened and people are getting back to work. So again, there's always a pop. I say that a hundred times. If I said a hundred times, I said a thousand times. There's always a pop. You know, we went from $1.50 to $1.79. And then the next thing you know, we sell off, break support. Again, I'm, I'm going to stress this until this doesn't um, happen. Whenever, when, when, whenever we're looking at entry, we're looking at when a stock breaks support. So you see the stock forms some support here around, around $2. You see it tries to hit, it tries to hit several times. And then it, when it goes ahead and breaks support and stays down for a while. This is when people seem to be buying for some reason. People are buying when this stock looks like it's completely falling off. So uh, we see it with SGOC, I believe. Uh, not the best example. Let's see here. Well, we got a good example after hours. So it popped, it fell off and, you know, just ran again out the blue. It, so, so it seemed J-O-B, uh, same thing. Stock popped, started getting some volume pre-market, um, fell off and then recovered. And now we'll see what it does. And where else are we looking at? ASFT. Nope, that's not going to be it. Um, staff, another job stock. Uh, it's only a matter of time. This stock should be getting some sympathy. Works when works and job runs, staff runs. So uh, it's like a three-headed monster. All, all the all the employment stocks uh, run in unison with each other. Uh, you know when they have a fundamental reason to run. So 
Uh, you look at the support, it's around $3.30. At some point, it, it has to retest $4 because that's just what it does. It looks like every few weeks, $4.50, pull back down to support. $4.50, pull back down to support. Uh, almost $7 pulled back down to this 350 support area. So again, you're just gonna have to look at uh, what's going on in the market to kind of uh, gauge what um, what place you need to run. So um, let's see, what else do we have? XELA, let's see, we're doing some scans, so Whatever comes up, we kind of look at. But again, you know, look at this volume. We got one day way back in March when it trades uh, hundreds of millions of shares. Now, uh, remind, be reminded that the volume divergence is what causes the stocks to make big moves. It's not just volume. It's when these stocks start getting noticed for the first time. When we, when we hardly get any volume and then now we're getting uh, 200 million shares. Again, that's what I said once, I said a hundred times. So 800,000 shares to half of a billion shares. Fast forward to three months, we go from 8 million shares to another half a billion shares. So get in on this day, a dollar and, uh, you know, you can double your money. Uh, and then again, we just get volume every day. Uh, uh, besides the first, the couple of days where it pulled back to support, and you know, again, we're waiting. We we want to buy when these stocks break support. So I mean, look look at look at look at the pullback, and then even even past the point where it sh technically should go, it breaks down all the way to to one eighty, and then now we go all the way up to around four dollars. So I mean, you can you can double your money here. Wait for a, a, a reentry and double your money again. That's just it. And, and you see the volume still coming, so still breaking out. So um, I can do a quick scan and see what comes up. Uh, you got any other stocks? I'm gonna pull up some of the stocks you mentioned on this chart, just to just to see what they look like. Uh, EVO, I don't know what that is, but it's some major loading here. Again, no volume, got a big volume day, consolidated, made support. Now we are ready to run. So this thing just got a billion, a billion shares and didn't really move much. A billion, a billion shares, and we got a, if I can see my screen, a 33% move. So uh, this this stock is ready, is set, is ready to explode. Uh, I would be looking forward to go into the 002s, uh, mid, mid 002s before I got in, and we could see a big run. So uh, that's pretty much it. You got anything else? Um, not that's pretty much it for me. One thing I, I do notice though, and something like like this particular play we just looked at, the thing I love about I love finding plays that are that not necessarily looking to buy on the highest volume day, but just watching as volume comes in. And if it's holding support as volume comes in, at some point it's it's gonna go up because the volume's coming in. It's, if it's if it's holding support and volume's coming in. That means it's, it, ha it has to bounce because otherwise it will be breaking support. You see what I mean? Like when volumes come in and total support means it's that perfect equilibrium. So it just needs that that one more big volume day to really get it get it over the hump to go ahead and break out. So that's 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 a pattern I'm really really bullish on right now is finding what's on support with volume coming in. Not necessarily trying to get in on the highest volume day, but just watching and as, as if, it, if it continues to hold, continues to hold. I mean, it's just super low risk, high reward that you're gonna get a bounce to the upside. Right. Uh, we're looking at all these, <laughs> all these plays with uh, at least 100 million shares. So, um, B L U U. That's interesting. Let me get the highest one. Cowie. I've seen that, but I've seen C A W I before. 
C O W I C O W I. I've seen that play before, and um, yeah, it went parabolic before from triple zero. Wow, triple zero three actually. Triple zero three in a few days. Um, you made highs of double zero five. I want to say that would be. Of course, I always calculate. I, I like calculating uh, returns. That would be a sixteen hundred percent return buying at the bottom and selling at the top. Of course, we don't normally catch the bottoms and tops, but we just want to get somewhere in the middle. But it looks like this stock is getting ready to, to run again, um, as one of the Discord members said. You know, September, the end of the year, OTCs heat up. Um, we're seeing, we, I don't think we saw, yeah, we saw one one with a billion shares today. Uh, it only changed uh, 11%. So HCMC, we're talking about a lot of stuff, isn't it? HCMC, uh, for some reason, is trading a billion shares, but this stock is not moving. <laughs> So again, um, and which is the very reason why, as we wrap up, I continue to talk about the volume divergence, the differ the differential between one day and the next. If you got a stock is trading a billion shares, if you trade a billion shares yesterday and the day before, it's probably not going to be moving much because the volume is in. You got a whole lot of people buying and a whole lot of people selling, but when it goes from almost no volume to a lot of volume, then you know the bot the bottom is already in from days before where there was no trading. So once it gets volume, that means that that buyers have noticed it and they became interested. And before the shorts and the in the and the day traders get to it, it makes a huge parabolic move, just like it did way back in January, where we went from double zero three to I mean, I'm sorry, triple zero three to, to, to 006. So it's pretty much all we got. There's a, I'm sure a lot more stocks we can, um, we can scan and talk about, but again, find your pattern, uh, make your plan, stick to your rules and execute. So anything else? Uh, that's it. Yeah. Just be disciplined. Yeah. Like I mean, have a plan and most importantly execute. Buying the weakness, selling the strength. That's pretty much the name of the game. Definitely. Um, hit the subscribe button, bell icon button, and give us a shot if you have any questions. Email us, greenwoodstocktraining.gmail.com. Uh, you can text. You can uh, join the Discord. You can tweet, tweet, DM, IG, and we will see you on the green side. God bless.